once upon a time a lady had messaged me that she doesn't want to look at her horoscope because she has four debilitated planets in her horoscope and that is why she feels that she will be miserable she will be not having any happiness or any enjoyment or anything fulfilling or anything worthwhile living in this world and because of that she said that she has gone away from astrology and she doesn't intend to get a consultation from anybody or go to any astrologer or any conference of astrology she has completely thrown out astrology from her life because she has four debilitated parents which according to her is or not is i would say are terrible placements i didn't say they are terrible i said according to her they are terrible placements all right so now you will see these misconceptions floating everywhere in internet in youtube especially okay so that is what we are going to discuss today what is an exalted planet and what is a debilitated planet that's the topic of today that's why i have named this video as the secret because everybody knows which planets gets exalted in which signs and everybody thinks that oh these are great things to have but i'll tell you when exalted planets can become the biggest problem for your horoscope and when debilitated planets can become the biggest blessing for your chart <laughs> okay so exaltation does not mean good and debilitation does not mean bad all right so today we will discuss on those topics and yes as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with those who are confused about or those who are misinformed about exaltation and debilitation okay and if you want a consultation from me regarding your personal horoscope and your personal planets which are either exalted debilitated or your own sign or enemy sign friend sign or mul trikon then you can go to my website down in the description section okay and yes before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you to understand the power of exalted planets <laughs> and the blessings of debilitated planets all right so now what is the uh, meaning of the word exaltation basically what is exaltation or debilitation they are dignities right dignities of planets dignity dignity means how the person feels or how we feel when we look at a person so suppose we say that this person is a very dignified person that means that Uh, one of the meanings is that that person is exactly doing what he is supposed to do and that person is not doing all of those things which he is not supposed to do he is abstaining from the don'ts and he is doing the do's so that's one of the prominent definitions of dignity that one does what he is supposed to do and he does not do what he is not supposed to do so then we say oh this person is very dignified because he is a great person so that means now exaltation and debilitation also means that the planets are doing what they are supposed to do which means that what is a planet supposed to do ultimately at its best possible capacity that is what the planet is doing so basically that means that the planet is completely aware of itself when we say that a dignified person has come that means that person is completely aware that where i should speak how much where i should not speak to whom i should speak to whom i should not speak what i should speak yes everything he knows <laughs> that means the person is completely aware of his position position means suppose he is the prime minister of a country then he knows what to speak and how to behave in a way that his uh, country's image is not tarnished yes or he is the uh, he is the coach of a football team then he knows how to uplift the uh, players of the football team or he is a teacher basically then he knows how to 
behave in a way that the students can get the proper guidance from him that means that an exalted planet is very highly aware of itself now what do you mean when i say aware aware means it's like saying suppose in a classroom there are 10 people or not 10 the nine people <laughs> yes nine planets nine people and suppose there is an exalted planet in your chart any house it can be first second third fourth fifth six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve doesn't matter okay you have an exalted planet suppose suppose venus is exalted so imagine that there are nine students in the class and one of the students is venus so what happens one day the teacher comes and says that my dear students today we will discuss something very interesting we will discuss on marriage how many of you are interested to no marriage or how many of you are interested to discuss marriage so then what will happen is because venus is exalted exalted means venus is completely aware of itself now which sign venus gets exalted that's secondary that's not important here the point here is venus is exalted in the chart that means that student whose name is venus he will pop up his hands my dear sir i want to know when i will get married to whom i will get married what will be the color of uh, uh, my girlfriend or you know her cheeks and what will be her physical features will she be good looking or she will not be that good looking will she understand me will i understand her how many kids are we going to have these are typical questions which venus can ask yes so now, why in the universe are the other planets not asking? Is it that they are not interested in marriage like Jupiter, Sun, Saturn and all? No, it's not like that. But it's like saying that whenever that topic comes, Venus is, Venus is dancing and it's bubbling with enthusiasm. Now imagine, suppose that person comes and tells, the teacher comes and says, My dear Venus, you want to know about marriage? You are going to have a terrible married life. You're going to have a miserable married life. <laughs> Suppose the teacher says like this. So then what happens? Then now all the other planets, they will not be affected much. Which means because they were not very much interested to know about their marriage. But now suppose this planet, uh, this student named Venus gets to know that he will have a terrible married life. Then what happens? He keeps crying whole day. Oh my God, my married life will be bad. Ah, it's miserable. So that means when you have an exalted planet, you are completely aware of all the karakattvas of the planet, the natural significations. So somebody's Mars is exalted, suppose. Then you will see these people that whenever they will hear anywhere there is violence going on or anywhere there is things related to sports going on or anything related to protests or anything to do with the physical body physical existence then they start talking about it naturally unconsciously that happens somebody whose mercury is exalted they are very critical in finding faults or finding details that will depend on uh, which planets are aspecting mercury and which uh, house mercury is or which planets mercury is conjunct with he can be good or bad in uh, finding faults finding faults can be good sometimes if a guru does that for his disciples but in other cases that might lead to gossip so now what i'm trying to say here is that an exalted planet is not a great planet it means that it's not necessarily going to give you great things what it will do is it will make you aware of the karakattvas which means if venus is exalted in somebody's chart that person will be very 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 aware of relationships which means anything which happens in the area of relationships that can fluctuate him very much so suppose his marriage is going great then he will feel that oh i don't need anything in life because 
now what is happening <coughs> that exalted planet which is having lot of prominence in his life yes lot of awareness he is finding fulfillment in that area but suppose uh, this person his wife or girlfriend they perish or they have a breakup or there is a divorce or something like that then that can completely put their entire life into ruins now why why that will happen because the person is very aware of relationships yes i will have i ha i should have a relationship or how is my relationship oh my god my relationship is going bad i am ruined i am finished life's terrible so that can happen if venus is exalted in somebody's chart so we before we give any judgments that an exalted planet is good or is it bad we must study the whole chart and the planets which are affecting that exalted planet so for example you will see in many charts where venus is exalted or it's in own sign or in mool trikon and it is afflicted then what happens is own sign means the planet is aware mool trikon means it is more aware and exalted means it's highly aware it's aware at its peak so suppose venus is in taurus libra or pisces and it is afflicted by mars saturn sun ketu or rahu either of these <laughs> then what happens especially if it's afflicted by saturn or ketu by conjunction or by aspect then you will see that the idea that there will be no relationships in my life the idea that there may be breaks in my relationships or i may lose somebody there may be breakups or there may be divorces in my life that completely takes a toll on their consciousness so in that case we have to warn the person that my dear sir you have an exalted planet which means it's like it's like a machine machine gun you know fully automatic machine gun which is there once you put it's like it keeps going so now we have to check the entire horoscope and we have to analyze is there enough strength for that exalted planet in the entire chart for that exalted planet to feel itself positively otherwise we should not give fake expectations to people yes so for example somebody uh, if they have too many planets in the 6th house or the lord of the 6th in 7th or lord of the 7th in 6th that these are indications of uh, some challenges in married life but suppose this planet this person has an exalted venus okay and the dasha of the 6th lord is running or the dasha of the 7th lord runs but that 7th lord is in 6th or the 7th lord is badly placed or venus is exalted but it is conjunct some malefic especially saturn and rahu suppose or saturn or rahu either of the ones then we have to warn the person that my dear sir when the dasha of this exalted planet is running and now what happens when the dasha of that exalted planet runs your entire life becomes about that awareness your see generally when what is dasha basically dasha is a temporary time for which a planet rules your entire life that's what dasha is i will discuss about dashas in later in detail but that's what dashas are so when somebody is running the dasha of an exalted venus it's like saying venus is already exalted but now you are feeling the karakatvas the natural significations of venus that's the only thing you are feeling in life and now imagine venus is what marriage and relationships so if the seventh house or other combinations in the chart they are not supporting marriage okay or they are saying that the person uh, can have a very difficult time in marriage then as an astrologer you have to warn that person warn doesn't mean you say that you will have a divorce that that's not what i mean i mean to say that that person can come to you with some half hearted uh, knowledge of astrology that sir my venus is in pisces you know i will have a great time you know sir please tell me where what will happen during this time you have to tell the person sir look these are the things but uh, unfortunately there is not sufficient strength in the chart for uh, rather than saying strength i would say I, i would say avenue there is not sufficient avenue in the chart that this planet's awareness can be felt in a positive way rather it can happen that you feel it negatively 
so that will uh, make the person realistic but if you say oh you know your planet is exalted you will have a great time and then after after the dasha kicks in then their whole life will be in ruins then they will come and uh, say that oh you astrologers you are bogus idiots you don't know anything astrology is nonsense parasala is written all garbage yeah there are people who say like this oh exalted jupiter my dasha has started take the case of exalted jupiter typical case na uh, for example uh, take cancer ascendant chart jupiter is exalted suppose now where jupiter gets exalted in the first house because jupiter gets exalted in cancer and cancer is the first house for the cancer ascendant now the sixth lord is coming into exaltation in the lagna and now the thing is depends on what the person is asking you so if sixth lord is in the lagna aspecting the seventh house that is definitely not a great placement for married life to have so now jupiter is exalted what it means it means that all the significations of jupiter which is what positivity optimism broad mindedness being all encompassing for giving people even if they are not deserving it yes being aware of god and anything which is beyond these materialistic uh, things you know beyond the material realm that's what jupiter is jupiter is your guru you are completely aware that i have a guru but now suppose that dasha runs for a cancer lagna and then that person is coming to you and saying that sir uh, there are some problems in my married life uh, but jupiter is exalted in the chart so you have to tell the person what is the meaning of an exalted jupiter exalted jupiter doesn't mean you have a great married life okay exalted venus also does not mean that that depends on the entire chart how your married life is and why am i talking of marriage because most of the questions which i get are pertaining to marriage and relationships that is why i am hitting at these two planets so what because see when you say married life it is not one year or two years yes especially if you are from india then it uh, can last for very long and even if you are in the west you are been brought up in a good you know culture and religious background is there or even even if uh, you have seen people in your family in the west who have had you know long term sustained marriages then you will also have that tendency that maybe i will only marry once yes that can happen but especially if you are in india then that's still very much prevalent that you marry only once of course now nowadays uh, these these things are going away but when you say that this person has a good or bad married life you have to judge the dashas because if a person marries at 25 then he will be married till the age of 75 so in that 50 years how many mahadashas will come so many mahadashas will keep coming yes so suppose is venus mahadasha venus mahadasha starts at 25 then till 45 is venus will run then a uh, sun will run till 51 sun is 6 years then after that moon will run till 71 then mars will run till uh, 78 because mars is 7 years so you have to judge venus you have to judge sun you have to judge moon you have to judge mars before you give a judgment about somebody's married life or you say that okay sir uh, your venus is not very well placed in the chart pertaining in matters of the 7th house but your sun moon and mars are well placed so the first 20 years may not be that great but after that things will improve and this will hold true irrespective of the planet if it is exalted or debilitated now what is debilitation debilitation means the planet is not aware it means you do not feel too much about those significations because you are not feeling as if it is a dignified planet which means it is not doing what it is supposed to do and it is also doing those which is it is not supposed to do like venus gets debilitated where in virgo so when venus is in virgo depending on the whole chart it can happen that the person can have extremes about relationships either i will only be in relationships or i will never be in relationships and when they are in relationships there can be that tendency to keep finding faults always 
or to find happiness and pleasure in unnecessary things these things can happen but that doesn't mean that the person will have a terrible married life that because the planet is different and the married life is different now then why do they say that venus is the karaka for marriage because if venus is in a great dignity in your chart then the potential for a great married life is much more suppose a person has venus exalted and then that person has great dashas back to back then he will enjoy his married life like anything but suppose he has a great married life which means the uh, planets the dasha of the planets are sitting in the uh, they are of the planets which are sitting in the second seventh fifth ninth or eleventh these you know these three four five houses so generally these five houses they give good and happy married lives generally two five seven nine and eleven okay so suppose uh somebody's venus dasha starts when they are getting married so suppose venus is in the 7th house then sun is maybe yes then sun maybe it can be in the 5th house <laughs> if if you take uh, the degrees very closely because sun and venus cannot be very far but still there are chances that sun can still be in the 5th house and suppose uh, he is born in a purnima okay then a uh, moon will be in the 11th house okay and then suppose mars is in the 9th house and then you and then suppose you see rahu is in the second house so that means all these planets back to back their dashas are signifying the houses 2 5 7 9 and 11 in some way or the other of course some of them one of them may be the lord of the sixth house or they may be sitting with the sixth lord which can uh, give challenges in married life that's separate but suppose these planets are there back to back so then then if the uh, person's venus is debilitated then what will happen is the person will have a happy married life but that will not consume so much of his energy so like for example have you seen some people they have great married lives and you go and ask them oh sir you have a great married life you know congratulations and they are like yeah actually yeah it's good you know nice <laughs> and then suppose your venus is in virgo and you have back to back dashas which are saying that no i will not let you be married okay then what will happen is you see oh sir you are not married uh, you are not having married life then the person will be like yeah who the hell wants and i am not interested <laughs> now because that debility is there that is not affecting him the denial of marriage or you know denial of relationships so whenever you uh, give a judgment about exalted planets please see the karakatvas which is planet which that planet represents and then you see are the upcoming dasha signifying that or not for example sun is exalted in somebody's chart sun is the karaka for which houses the first house ninth house and the tenth house yes these three houses primarily so then you have to see uh, so then suppose some somebody has a sun in aries that's why you will get people filled with uh, uh, such things during consultations like oh my sun is exalted you know but my sun dasha was terrible well your sun is in aries but what if it is afflicted by saturn what if it is afflicted by rahu ketu or mars what if it is in the eighth house in the dusthana houses then physically it is going to cause you turmoil because the houses are not signifying good houses a uh, good things in life especially dusthanas okay so then what will happen so suppose sun is in the 8th house and it is exalted then these things can happen that you get insulted and you are 10 times aware of that insult because surya is exalted so you are con- you are always concerned about your you know image name fame status reputation what people think of you and then you tell that person oh you are going to have a great sun dasha you know and then that person is miserable and then suppose moon is also somewhere you know in houses like 3 or 12 then sun and moon these can be very difficult dashas and then you say oh you know your moon is exalted here there no it doesn't work like that moon exalted has a different meaning and moon in a dusthana has a sep- completely separate meaning that is why people will say oh uh, my moon is in dusthana it is in the 6th house but it is exalted so now they will think so now what they think is dusthana is like something bad which they have coined 
and then exaltation is something good which they have coined okay so then they will then they will get confused then they will say okay so moon is exalted but it is on dusthana so then they will mix it then they will say that oh the exaltation and the dusthanas they are cancelling it uh, each other out no that's the most funniest uh, explanation i've heard it doesn't work like that all right and suppose they will say that oh, okay suppose uh, somebody is a scorpio ascendant for example and uh, suppose the lagna lord mars is in the ninth house okay so then mars is in the sign of cancer so there it gets debilitated so then you will say oh debilitated planet but the house is good so the effect is nullified you will see all these funny things you will see astrologers doing it time and again they will mix houses and zodiac signs because they do not know what is the difference the zodiac sign shows your awareness how aware you are of that planet and the house will show what are the activities that are happening externally so if it is in a dusthana house then there will be challenges now the challenge may be good or bad for you that will depend on the horoscope that will depend on so many things arud halagna as vishri larsen said it will depend on the navamsha what is going on in the navamsha from that you have to see what is going on in the lagna chart and then you will say oh no no actually you know uh, it's debilitated but it is in the 10th house so it's good <laughs> it doesn't work like that <laughs> that is why you will find uh, people that uh, they will come to you and then they will say sir actually i was running the dasha of this debilitated planet you know but i got so much name fame during this are obviously you fool you will get if it is signifying houses like lagna the 5th the 9th and the 10th and the 11th you will definitely get, get name and fame it if that debilitated planet even if it is lording these houses you will definitely get some name fame 1 5 9 10 and 11 you will get it you must get it but debilitated means <coughs> you are not aware which means okay is there is good fine nothing great about it all right so that is what i wanted to say that how to study exalted and debilitated planets that's the thing houses and zodiac signs they are different do not mix them all right house is what is externally happening if it is the 10th house or the 11th house it is signifying name and fame there is no doubt about it all right but the sign will tell you what's the level of awareness in it okay so if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is confused about how to see exalted planets or debilitated planets all right so and if you want a consultation please go down to my website you will find the link below in the description section okay until next time god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him bye bye